Hi, my name is Alex Greninger, and I'm an associate professor in the Department of Laboratory Medicine and Pathology at the University of Washington here in the Clinical Virology Lab, doing this quick little uh, ASM brief on antiviral testing. Um, so here we're going to talk about HSV uh, antiviral testing, which I think is unique uh, that has been done traditionally via a plaque reduction assay. It's the one that we do the most similarly to antimicrobial testing or actually testing uh, for the antiviral phenotype. Um, so what that means is you need a culture isolate, a viral isolate that uh, you isolate from a swab or from a specimen, send that off to a reference lab, and they uh, incubate usually with a cyclovir, but can be also phosphorin under other drugs uh, in increasing or decreasing amounts of, of drug. And you have basically get a, a, a titration curve of the, um, of the antiviral effect. You're able to calculate an EC50, and there are cutoffs for whether something is sensitive for resistance. The acid can be highly, it can be a little bit variable. Um, it's, it's a difficult one to, to execute. It requires that culture isolate, which can be increasingly difficult in this age now where we have the potential of MPOX on any swab uh, that's taken for like a genital lesion. Um, so that is now makes it harder to do HSV culture because you have to worry about BSL-3 culture. Um, and same thing for SARS-CoV-2 for respiratory specimens. Um, but if you have those, those isolates, they can be submitted for phenotypic testing. And I would also note that this is uh, a little bit of a challenge because of the slow turnaround time. When we've looked at our own orders, from the time the clinician orders to the time that a result comes back, it's about 40 days. Um, uh, and some of that's on our side of just getting the isolate, having to get that culture isolate, expand it, send it out, have that thing either re-expanded or retested, and then, and then done having the phenotypic testing. But this is one of the few use cases where you actually have phenotypic testing that's performed for antiviral testing. Um, there are other ways. So in Europe, and, and our lab here offers uh, a UL23 uh, sequencing test. Um, when you think of where I cycle, how acyclovir works, uh, it is activated, uh, phosphorylated by the UL23 thymidine kinase, the virally encoded kinase, and then it's integrated by the DNA polymerase. And phosconet is a directly activ activating, act acting DNA polymerase inhibitor. And so most of the mutations for acyclovir resistance occur via this UL23 inactive inactivation, either through a frame shift or a point mutation uh, that, that inactivates the enzyme. So you know, here we sequence UL23. It's a small locus. We can find frame shifts. We can find internal stop codons. Can't Hard to figure out every single mutation. There are still variants of unknown significance there. But we can get a, a more rapid turnaround time, say, in one week with Sanger uh, and get an interpretation for you. But again, it only limits to acyclovir and, it, and only for UL23. It doesn't cover the larger UL30 uh, DNA polymerase. That would still require, if you have a high probability of, of resistance and you're not seeing it in UL23, that would require uh, a phenotypic test to characterize UL30. And there are also other drugs like pertelivir that are not currently authorized, but are still you know, sort of in the, the study pipeline uh, that target the helicase and primase, where this may also be an opportunity for uh, more genotypic testing. So so you're seeing a little bit more genotypic testing for HSV resistance, um, uh, especially for those immunocompromised populations. Um, and that is all I wanted to say about HSV antiviral resistance testing. Thank you very much and happy to take any questions offline.